Coming. Yeah? Foam party. The nicest foam party. Oi, you there watching this video? Yeah, you. <laughs> right, yes. Make sure you smash the like on this video right now because we're going to be going back through my memories, through memory lane from the past 11 years on where I used to go, what I used to do, where I used to ride before there was any skate parks in my area for the first five years. Make sure you enjoy this video because I'll tell you what, the past four hours of filming this video, I really enjoyed it. The amount of memories I got, it was insane. So make sure you enjoy this video, show some love in the comments, and I hope you guys get motivated from this. All right, peace. I'm wonky, sorry about the filming. I keep falling over and I'm about to fall over right now. But I'm just talking to the camera right now to myself because I'm a stupid idiot. Looks like I'm about to fall off again. Oh! I've never run out from me now, so I'm gonna stop this video. So I guess you could say this is pretty much where it all started for me, this little wall. So obviously um, back in the day when I started riding, I didn't have, we didn't have a local skate park. We still don't, um, let's look at I actually have a way of transport now. But when I started, I had nowhere to go. We would just have a session around the streets of one morning, which is where I actually live. And this is where we would come to. This little wall would hop over this, straight to this banked road and just ride all day, every day. Practice, every single day. No skate parks, just this. It's all we'd do, man. It's all we'd do. And I miss it, I do miss it. It doesn't half bring back memories. Literally, I think the last time I actually rode here was definitely, I think it was 2011. This was definitely a lot bigger back in the day as well. This is a lot bigger. <laughs> I look at it now, um, bearing in mind when I was a little, I was a little kid when I used to ride this. I look at it now and it's kind of just looks like a curb. We still actually have scratch marks on here from when we used to stall it from like 10 years ago. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Time flies. Time flies. So those tricks you just saw were the tricks that I always wanted to do over this wall but never actually got the chance to because Kimber Skate Park came along and uh, yeah we started riding that. We stopped riding here because we'd always get kicked out. Surprised no one's actually kicked me out yet. CCTV are looking straight at me but uh, glad I got that done. I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, progression, it's good. Practice doesn't make it perfect no matter what you have in your area. No skate park, curbs. Make the most of it, promise you. This is where I'd always practice my 360 fakie tricks as well. Because this is like a hill as well, like one big hill. We'd always practice manuals. We'd always practice our 360 tricks, scoot fakies. Mate, these are the days. I probably did that cleaner in 2011. This speed bump right here was the speed bump of dreams. Bangers always got thrown down right here. We'd always chill on these plant pots and just sesh this speed bump and hop this wall. And there's also kind of like a little driveway over there. It's like a little box. We'd always sesh that, but eventually we got, we got too tall and now we started headbutting the roof on it. But this entire place brings back so many memories. It's so weird to come back with this car and with where I'm at now. It actually it makes me appreciate the uh, it makes me appreciate them days. It really does. I'm thankful for it. <laughs> oh. 
The main issue in this industry right now is uh, the younger generation's motivation. So obviously, as you know, uh, if you do know, we recently had a lot of skate parks closed down in the area and this is kind of what the younger generation now have to resolve to. Before these skate parks were even invented, this is, it's exactly what I was doing. And a lot of you are messaging me asking, like, how do you gain motivation? These are the spots I'd come to with my music in and just ride. Just ride, that's it. I'd go home, watch edits and just ride. It's exactly what I'd do 10 years ago and I did that three to five years straight. At the time I didn't have a car as well. So traveling 25 minutes in a car to the nearest skate park wasn't pleasant. Um, wasn't the easiest thing to do either. Um, but just don't forget, I was probably in your spot at one point as well. Now I'm doing this as a job and it's, I'm grateful. I'm trying to convince all you guys to do the same. No matter if you haven't got a local skate park. I used to ride curbs and I used to jump over walls for half of my life. <laughs> it's kind of mad. It is actually kind of insane. But yeah, I'm making this video in follow-up from my progression video because recently, last week, actually marked the day where I've spent 50% of my life on two wheels. Not only just skiers, bikes as well. I've been trying to find a career path and, and success for 50% of my entire life. I'm 21 years old, 50% of my life. Some of you may be watching this video probably aren't even 10 years old yet. I've spent that amount of time trying to find a career path and success. I'm not gonna lie, some of you might think all the subscribers and all the followers might be successful, but I'm still not where I wanna be at. I'm still trying to find it. So should you guys. Some of you might get luckier than I did. Some of you might have a local. Some of you might have more time to practice. Some of you might have better weather. But I'm just saying, even when you're in these worst conditions, anyone could do whatever they want. Believe me. But these are the places I've come, even on my own, sometimes with mates, just to ride. Right here, right here was where I actually landed my first tower whip. This is another spot. Me and my mates have actually just come along, ride along here, jump off the end. Pretty much all we did, we'd come down here, we'd ride along this, maybe even try and mani across it if we were good, <laughs> and try tricks off the end of it. But right here marks the spot of where I landed my first tower whip ever. Like every time I pass this spot, it just reminds me of when I landed that. I'm not gonna lie, all it does is remind me of the time of when I actually, actually landed that because when I actually landed the th my first tower whip, I was trying for over six months just to try and land my first tower whip and uh, right there is where I got it. So yeah, as you can imagine, I was super happy that I landed that. I was over the moon. But right here as well, this wall right here marks the spot of where I landed my first double tower whip. Some of you guys will probably remember this wall as well. We'd ride along this. We'd try some hammers off the end. This is kind of where we used to hang out like in the day. Like when we got bored of the other spots, we'd come to this one. This was kind of the spot where my progression really started to occur. But the first major injury I ever had whilst riding was off this wall. I actually had to bright flip off it, trying to show off in front of a bunch of girls. Clearly locked it up, snapped it. I was in a sling for about a good three, four months, I couldn't write, didn't even go to school. That's what I remember this for. <laughs> We'd wait over here, call each other if there's no cars. Right now there's a car coming. Blitz it across the road, hop over this wall, Centrix over it. This was another spot. This little two step over a curb. This one brings back memories as well. This is kind of like one of the scariest ones out of the lot as well, because you had to cross the road. And back in those days, our parents would always tell us before we go out, watch the roads, be careful. So we'd always spot each other right here. Then we'd hop over here. Mate, this brings back so many memories. I am, this is probably one of the best videos I've ever filmed, just for the sake of memory.
If you guys are a true subscriber of mine, you'll know. You'll probably know the scene behind me, but obviously you've seen all them spots, but this is actually truly where it'd go down. I had a hard time where I didn't really ride with friends that much because a lot of fallouts went down. Um, yes, I used to get bullied for riding, but this is kind of where I could go, where no one would come take the piss, no one would come shout at me. I managed to get myself a ramp, uh, a little kicker ramp that I used to place right there. And I would practice outside here every day before school at 6am, every night. Uh, I used to sneak down the pub, which is just down the road. Because yeah. I had lights outside as well, I could go down there and ride. But this is exactly what I'd do when I couldn't go to the skate park and I really wanted something out of this. And um, as I said earlier, a lot of people are lacking motivation. Um, because most, most riders nowadays are just trying to be successful. They're, they're trying to become sponsored. The biggest tip I can give you guys from my experience is ride for the fun of it. If you enjoy riding, ride. Uh, if you don't enjoy riding, I don't know what I can say. I could say the obvious, but you know, I'm not trying to push that. But uh, if you enjoy riding, just keep doing it. People that are successful are the people that are actually passionate and actually want to take it further. For the first five years of me riding outside my house right here or around the other spots you've seen, I wasn't trying to get sponsored. I was, I was never really making, I was making iPhone videos just for the sake of memory. Slight location move, sorry about that. A bunch of cars pulled up, but uh, yeah. Don't ride for the sake of just trying to get sponsored, please. Like, as I said earlier, I've spent 50% of my life doing this. I'm, I'm not doing it for the sake of success. I'm not, I wouldn't even class myself as fully successful yet. I'm just doing it for the fun of it. So in a couple of years time, those, all those old videos you've seen, I took them for the sake of now. I look back and I see them and I see my progression and that's what makes me happy. And if you guys keep doing it, you guys can do the same as well. I'm making all these videos. I mean, there's videos on my channel that I'd love to, I would love to delete for the sake of they're embarrassing. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to use a camera, but I keep them on there for the sake of progression. I look back at them and it makes me happy to see how much I've actually progressed and how much I have increased my level of filming videography, photography, riding, ev everything like that. That's the kind of message I want to push to you people. Don't give up, just chase your memories and chase your dreams without having to force it upon yourself. Just have fun while you're doing it. But yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, but altogether, 11 years of scootering up to this point and uh, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. Anyway, I'd appreciate it if you smash a like on this video, check out all my discount codes, Smith10 on Cool to Scoot, support your rider own companies, they're the ones doing the most. Smith 2500 scooters if you want any cheaper parts as well, 25% off on that site. I really hope this video does give you guys some motivation on where, what you can do, what you can become, as long as you keep doing it, because that's exactly what I've done, I've just kept doing it, and that's how it is. And I've really enjoyed this journey, I really have. Anyway guys, I'd appreciate if you show your love in the comments, subscribe if you're new, turn the notification bell on, and also don't forget to turn on notifications in your settings on your phone. It was like, it was like a good trip to memory lane this past three hours of filming this video and I enjoyed it. Anyway guys, peace.